world is sick, sinful, and with suffering. Some describes this reality. There is a paradox in living with faith in a hostile world. It doesn't not represent God. The South do not escape for, from this paradox, a double reality of God, a sick world with faith in a loving God who appears close, distant, and almost absent in some cases. Well, the Psalmists recognize God's sovereignty, his government, his power, and his righteous judgment. Our God is a loving Father, faithful, and safe refuge in times of need. However, there are moments of perplexity when God seems silent or absent. So the psalmists respond in prayer, both when they perceive God as ab absent and when, he, when his presence is manifested. This is a very important lesson for us in a practical way, okay? In a practical way. So um, we are going to pray. Heavenly Father, lovely, faithful Father, you are here, and we need to learn this lesson. Learn how you are in the middle of time of pain, loss, and anguish, as well as in times of joy, health, and achievement. We ask you, my Lord, that we can learn the lesson when we need to learn in order to be prepared to you very soon coming. Thank you, my Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, let me start with a, qu a question. When is easier to believe and trust in God? Think, when is it easier? When things go well or when things go wrong? Oh, Luis, you are here. All right. Think, who of you think that it's easier to, f to keep the faith in God when everything is okay? Please raise your hand if you are agree with this statement. Nobody? Oh, all right, good. Just one person, okay. But uh, so you think the rest of these people, of you, uh, think that the, the, we, it's easier to keep our faith when the, the things go wrong? Mm. Go wrong, sorry. Yes? Yeah. I think, Pastor, that unfortunately oh. that's what it's all about. You know, most of us, we like to be able to have a great, wonderful connection with God, but we only remember Him in times of trouble. We only come to Him in times of trouble. You know, when you look at outside all of those who are affluent, and I think that's one of the things that we're going to talk about the lesson. It says, mm -hmm. why, Lord, are you blessing all of these individuals until, and I won't spoil for the lesson that continues, but until we realize that there is a time when which God's going to judge each one. But it's sad. I, I think I'm, I'm with our sister here. It's true that it's we, can, we can praise him more. We can enjoy him more when things are good. But unfortunately, what happens is in those times, we don't remember that we have a God. In those times, we, we tend to just live our life like there is no God. And it's when we're in trouble, when we have sadness, when we have, when we have issues in our life, it's when we start holding on to him more. And that's, that's one of those things that I think that the lesson is going to, it has pointed out, it's so great. Because you see in, especially this particular lesson, um, is talking about how do I sing a song in foreign lands 
but yet it never brought that up again in the whole lesson is because the song needs to be in your heart. The song mm -hmm. needs to be something that you have to be continuously uh, singing. It doesn't matter where you, where you are located. I know you and I can kind of understand that a little bit better because we're coming, you know, we're out of our, not our known more our native land and we're into foreign lands but at the same time it is so much sweeter when you do find god even in those foreign lands and you can sing those songs thank you thank you very much so we are going to explore the attitude of the psalmist in the bible in the psalms okay so think about it in, uh, i i would like to uh I would like to ask, in the end of the lesson, you, you need to grasp what we need to do when we suffer. What we need to do is very important because it's practical lesson for our life, okay? So uh, let me introduce how many of you has suffered a lot, a lot, no, just one. A, a little. Raise your hand. A little. All right. Good. But the, you, you are suffer, right? You are suffer. So. Do you, do you mean uh, like physically, mentally, or spiritually? What do you mean? All of. Because we are not separated. With the separate the dimension. If you. Uh, have pain in your arm is you who suffer, right? If I have cancer, I am who suffer, right? So, oh, let me uh, introduce this. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Is the text of memorize, right? To for memorize. So. We are going, biblical faith often involves uncertainty and suspense as much as confidence and affirmation. Sometimes the uncertainty and suspense, especially in the face of evil and the seems absence of God can be almost unbearable is correct, unbearable, insupportable. However, uncertainty should never refer to God. It's our uncertainty, but God is not, God is very sure, faithful, consistent, okay? But we are uncertainty. Uh, so his loving and righteous character of his faithfulness the psalmists may have doubts about the future, but they often appeal to God and wearing, and wearing love and faithfulness. Yes, that is very good. So we are going to explore five questions. Five questions. Every question is every day of this week, right? You know, Pastor, as you were reading here, and it's so amazing because all of us lift our hand that we've all been in situations that are difficult. But the one thing that makes us different is that we've never failed to understand God being by our side. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the one that gives me... I was talking to a, to a member last Sunday when we have... Our, at 7 a.m., we have a worship meeting on Sunday mornings. And it was about, I don't know how others can actually go through their trials and tribulations without that connection with God. You know, God's not, this lesson taught us very simply that God's not going to take away the trials and tribulations. We're going to go through them. But the beautiful part of it, you, you see that boat in there, God's hand is going to be around surrendering, helping us, that as long as we're within his realm, as long as we're within the boat, like, like this is picturing, yeah. then God's protection is going to be with us. 
And it's so wonderful to be able to, we can see and we can feel the anguish that the psalmists are feeling. I mean, it's real. It's not just anything. There's many of us here that are going through tough anguish moments. But yet, we also can feel the hand of God and his embrace through all those situations. And that's what makes us so different. That we can actually experience something so difficult in our life, but yet put a smile in our face because we know that God, we know that our God is strong and Absolutely. he's the one that's battling for so, us. So for that reason, it's very important, uh, our intimate relationship with God in every time, every day, every minute, that is the point. Where, when, where is God when we suffer in the same place? that God the Father was when Jesus was dying. Was dying because the pain of God is so strong, much more infinite, more strong than you pain, you suffer. God is love. God is love. But sometimes need to uh, how you say, hidden? Be, be hidden because he is God and whole, holy and the sin, sin uh, provoke the anger of God. Someday this anger will finish with the second coming. So think about this. The first question is, why does God allow sin and suffering to exist? Psalm 74 and 79 is Sunday. Why does God allow the innocent to suffer? It's Psalm 88, Monday. Why doesn't God put an end to our current suffering. Psalm 69. Tuesday. Have his promise in scripture failed? No, no way. Why does the wicked prosper? Psalm 37 and 73. So this is our lesson. Yeah, the first one. The days of evil, the days of evil, yes? So, do you remember the King Nebuchadnezzar? That's correct. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple and right Jerusalem. God's people were totally confused. Totally. What is the reaction of these people? Why? This is the city of God, the temple of God. Why? We were destroyed by the enemy, pagan people. Why? It's not possible. Something is wrong. Yeah, something is wrong. Jeremiah and other prophets sound about this or tell us about this. Something is wrong. Yes, it if I'm not mistaken, I would say that sin is present within in that city. And that's what happened. But sin is there. I believe God tests the city with a foreigner, which they never can ever came over and destroyed it. And can you imagine destroying a beautiful city? What a shock that gotta be. Like you know, over there in Ukraine, look at that city. Right. Beautiful place. Look at it now. Ah, oh, but rubble. You know, by mm -hmm. a foreigner. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. not saying that you, Ukraine is, is sinful like that, but I'm just saying this is how things work and makes you think who's on your side? Is God or is it, or is it the devil? And you got to be one or the other. Yeah, that's my thinking. If they're good, they're good as, good as God, and the other stuff to me is evil. And God, although God allows it to happen, because Satan got so much rain. He lets him have so much rain in this world. And he allows these things to happen. To test people's courage and how much that people love God and how much they love the world. 
Yes. Okay. Do you remember the prayer of Daniel? Daniel 9? He confessed. He confessed his sin and also the sin of his people. And asked, forgive us, Lord, forgive us. So think, when the suffer come, you need to pay attention and go to the, to the cross of Jesus Christ. There you we will find the answer. And also you go to sanctuary. Go to the sanctuary. And also you need to confess your own sin and the sin of your family and sin of your church, sin of your nation. Yes, you are an intercessor. Right? So think about this. Let, can, you, uh, can you help me reading some passage, please? If you, uh, can you re uh, read, please, Psalms 79 and verse 1, 2, 4, please? Thank you. Psalm 79, 1 to 4. O God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the heaven. The, fish, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water around about Jerusalem and there was none to bury them. We are become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to them that are round about us. So this important, uh, the suffering, how do you say it? Do you know the, the word theodicea? Theodicea is to vindicate the God rule and also the God's character. How to explain, can you explain other people who uh, blaspheme the, the name of God and tell, tell you when you are suffering, tell you where, are, where is your God? If you are faithful, where is your God? This is painful, right? It's very difficult with Jesus Christ also when he was dying. There are a lot of people, how you say, burlando say? Hmm? Mocking. mocking him, mocking him. So if God, people were destroyed, where was the honor of God's name? The only solution according to the psalmist sin is for God to avenge, avenge, avenge his people and destroy their enemies and he had done in the past. So, please, could you read uh, Psalm uh, 74, 9 and 11? Please, thank you. Seven, uh, 74, 9 to 11, verse 9 to 11. I'm reading from uh, King James Version, okay. uh, Psalm 9 to 11. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet, neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. O oh God, how long shall the adversaries reproach Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand? Pluck it out of thy bosom. So the question about the justice of God rise in this point, right? So throughout this story, 
Christian have been uh, have have been suffering if during the dark ages. The Christian, the truly Christ, the true Christian, were persecuted and massacred. Yes, in the first, second world war, uh, war. So, also, there, there is. Uh, what is? How long is the passion of God for this world? Do you imagine God? Do you think God is indifferent? No way. God is ready to defend his people, but he has passion. Because, look at this, it is revelation. Because all evil plan need to grow to, in, uh, to the maturity in the world. And all good plan need to mature and give fruit. This is Revelation 14 and Revelation 18, 1 and 2. Think, the humanity is almost mature. Think, think about this. Uh, if, so, aware that sin had brought them to this situation, he asked God to listen. Remember his covenant. Forgive sin, remove suffering, and act on behalf of his people. God is faithful to his covenant. If you make a covenant with God, you are in, a best, in the best position in life. When did you make this covenant with God? When you baptize, were, was, were baptized and keep testifying about God. That is very important. If you have some comment, please write your hands and I, the microphone will go. Okay? Why does God allow sin and suffering to exist? Why don't could the head of Satan, Satan, just in the very beginning of the sin in, the, in Satan uh, appear? Why, why God didn't cut the head of Satan and destroy it in the beginning. Well, that is very important. <laughs> you need to think about that. But God is faithful Amen. and has a plan, Amen. a beautiful plan for you. You need to remain faithful also, praying, 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 praying in all situations. You know, it's interesting because when you look at this here, uh, the psalmist is saying, why have bring back your covenant? Do you have a covenant with us? But as we see Israel through the time, yes, they would come to forgiveness, but they would still keep their idols. They would still keep their sins in the camp. Mm -hmm. And this is the one thing that the lesson is trying to point out for us. The lesson is trying to get, yes, remember that sin needs to be in this world, like you mentioned in Revelation, because it needs to come to its full fruition. So a million years from now, we can see that sin and what the destruction of sin is. But at the same time, we, as sons and daughters of Christ, we need to understand that when God wants us to remember his covenant, that the covenant is a dual way. It's not just God saying, hey, I have already promised Abraham what, that you are going to be blessed. But yet, we need to be faithful to God. We need to get away. We need to destroy all of our sins in our lives. And that's when we're fully going to be in a covenanted relationship with God. What happens most of the times is that we still want to, what I call, dance with the devil. And we still want God's blessing. And the two cannot come together. It's not until we're fully surrendered to our Lord. Until, and the psalmist will show you. 
And it's interesting because many times you can feel the, 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 the hurt, you can feel the, the happening in their life, but at the same time they remember back God's faithfulness. At the same they remember back God's promises. And that's what God wants to leave with you, especially this particular week, is to understand that yes, sin is still going to continue until it gets to the cup is overflowing, just like the promised land, until they got overflow the cup, they wouldn't be able to take over. It's the same thing that's going to happen at the end, but we need to continue to understand that there's a part that we have to do. Absolutely. There's a part that we must do, and that is to surrender our hearts. Yeah, we have an important part in this conflict between evil and, and uh, good. We need to be definitely consecrated to God. Definitely. There, is, there are some parts of our lives we need to Confess before, before God. Confess as soon as possible. Okay, Margaret, go ahead. There's no doubt about it. There's ample evidence in the Bible to show that God's people um, in the time of, you know, the nation of Israel suffered many times because of their sin. God used other nations to chastise them. Yep. However... There is also ample evidence in the Bible to show that not only do people suffer as a result of their sin, innocent people suffer. Absolutely. Righteous Absolutely. people suffer. Mm -hmm. They suffer because of the enemy that is in the camp. And Absolutely. God's people have to be like Job. When we go through times of suffering, as we've already, all of us testified, we have to a lesser or greater degree, we have to remember not to put the blame on God. We have to be like Job, and we have to say, even though he slay me, yet will I trust in him? Absolutely. Because we know that God is faithful, God has a place prepared for his faithful ones, and the suffering that any of us experience here on this earth, when we look at it in the light of eternity in his presence, we'll say it was as nothing. Right. We have a faithful God, and it's when we suffer the most, I think that's when we draw closest to him. Yeah. Because we know, even though, like the psalmist says, I can't feel your presence. <laughs> right. It doesn't mean to say his presence is not there. Right. Thank you. Of course, not all suffering comes for our own sins. Of course not. The world is full with sin. So sometimes we suffer in innocent way when uh, a family was was dri driving their car, and then uh, some other car driving by a drunk person uh, hit the car, and all in the family died. This is terrible. Of course. Do you imagine how many people in Ukraine suffer in an innocent way? Or in Palestine? When there are earthquakes or tornadoes or other natural manifestations, many innocent people suffer because this earth it's a strange air. It's a strange land. Our land is not here. It's not here. So, thank you. I I am going to pass quickly to the second. I have many comments about this. Even the lesson tell us some important information, but. We are going to proceed. Uh, why does God allow the innocent to suffer? So can you please read 
some ATH group, ATHC. And it's possible ATA verse 6 to 8 and 16 to 18. Please. Chapter Psalms, chapter 88, chapter verse 3 to 4, and 9 to 14. Well, I, I think uh, it's possible read the Psalm. Uh, 88, 3 to 18, because all of this psalm is very important. So go ahead, please. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that know, that go down into the pit. I am as a man that had no strength, free among the dead like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deeps. Thy wrath laid hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves, Selah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up and I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Will thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee, Selah? Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark, and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness. But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Thank you. At the gates of death. So, the word, this word is sick. Many innocent people suffer. This sin affects everyone, good and evil. The consequences of Israel's disobedience came, of course, to a, a, a pagan, pagan nation. So think about, for example, in Daniel. Daniel was uh, captured in six a six or five before Christ, with this first uh, conquer of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, and he he was very faithful. Jeremiah suffered a lot. Not only by, by a pagan nation, but by his own people. So it's, if you recount how many faithful people suffered during the biblical story, you can see we are in a strange land, really a strange land. So, we need to learn, we need to, strong res we need to have a strong resili resilience, resiliency in God to live and testify in the middle of the suffering because not only people around us see us, but angels, angels are how to say, witnesses, our faithfulness. Job is an exact example of this situation. Go ahead, brother. Okay, yeah. Uh, sometimes these things are quite easier said than done, yeah? Uh, as you were speaking, I remembered the story of Job. Uh, Job was an innocent man, 
but the Bible told us he suffered greatly. And the most interesting part of the story of Job is that if you read the entire book of Job, Job was never told the reason why he suffered. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? So he suffered, and he never knew the reason why he suffered. But the interesting part of the story of Job, just like someone said, was the fit that Job uh, exudes in all these trials. Uh, even though he slays me, yet I would believe in him. You know, and sometimes that resonates. It's, uh, when we read it, let me give an example with my wife. I wake up one night and I see a knife in my neck and my wife says, my sweet husband, don't worry, I love you. Yeah? <laughs> what am I going to do? Tell her, yeah, I love you too, just cut. Or am I going to push her away and scream? You know? But Job is saying, even though God cuts my neck, I would keep believing in him. You know, so right. as Christians, most times we suffer and we don't know why. Uh, Paul told us that it's an, as a result of spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, in, in the working place, we'll say it's way above our pay grade, right? Mm -hmm. So some of those discussions we are not privy to. We don't even understand, but we suffer. But what God wants us to do is to believe in him because he has promised us that one day he will make all things right. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Th okay, Ruth, go ahead. Ruth, yes, um, it's very interesting because God didn't, uh, didn't answer Job why, but he himself revealed to Job. That is the point. We need to see God in prayer and study the Bible and testify about this. Thank you, Ruth. Yeah, I just wanted to add to what my brother said over there. Jesus said, he said, this, uh, John 16, 33, this have I told you that in me you will have peace. Right. In this world you will have tribulations, right. but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we remember the words of God. And, we know, and in Psalm 34 also it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him from all of them. So when trouble comes, it, like he said, it's easier said than done. But sometimes with like personal experience, with tears running down my face, and I said, I don't know why you haven't intervened, but I know you are God, and I will not deny you. Right. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yes, of course. Uh, there is no mention in Psalm 88 of the sins that could have caused his illness. In reality, his suffering, as often happened with us, our suffering, did not de derive from any sin of uh, his own. The reality makes suffering something difficult to understand, inexplicable. There is only one solution. Cry out to him who controls everything and wait to him to act in due time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. My is the bandage, right? Say the Lord. So we need to be patient. That the patient of saints. That is very important. So let's go to the next, next day. Tuesday, where is God? Why does God, no end our current suffering. Uh, do you have something? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, when we are able to sing our song in a strange land, I think it gives a much stronger testimony to the people around us right. who may not have heard that song before. And I'm thinking of uh, Paul and Silas when they were in the prison. And at midnight, mm -hmm. they were singing songs. What happened as a result of that? You know, conversion. Yes, yes, conversion. So when things are going well in our lives and we praise God, people say, oh, yeah, sure, everything is all right. But when things are going wrong and we can still praise God, I think that's when those who don't really know God look at us and say, what is it? that your God can do for you that makes you feel that even now going through this, you can say, look, it doesn't matter 
whether I live or whether I die, I am the Lord's. Or I'm going through a tough time, but I know who's by my side. You know, it's at these very difficult times when we sing our song, metaphorically, yeah. that other people have their eyes open to a God that maybe they haven't seen before in that light. So I pray that we'll all be able to sing our songs in a strange land, as yeah. difficult as it may be, but we do it to his honor and glory. Yes, I think it's just my own petition also to God. And I think every one of us. Uh, so uh, it's important, our testimony in the middle of the suffering is very important. Uh, may, maybe some murmuration or some complaints, or I don't know how it's expressed in English, but sometimes our darkness pass to other people through our life, our, our tongues. That is not good. We need to transmit light to other people. Yes? Something, someone more? No? Okay. Let's, why does God not end our current suffering? So look at this, Psalm 42, one, two, three. Please, can you read some? of this side of the, the uh, church. Psalm 42, one, two, three. And this other side, please. Psalm 102, two, two, four. Yes, thank you. Psalm 42, verse one to three. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for you, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, where is your God? Amen. Yeah. All right. Psalm 102 and uh, verse 227, please. Can you read? This side? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as on earth. My heart is smitten and, and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican in the wilderness. I am like an owl in the desert. I wash, and I am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Wow. Well, uh, can you read also uh, Psalm 69? One, two, three, please. Psalm 69. One, two, three. Thank you. Uh, Psalm, what, what, which one? Oh, Psalm 69, one, two, three. Yes. Uh, verse 69, uh, verse one. Save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep myrrh where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overthrow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dry. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. Yes. How do you respond? How do you respond? How do you respond to the apparent absence of God? The lesson says, um, God is still the same God who heard them in the past, and so they are confident that he hears them now. So your spirit, spiritual experience with God before the crisis is very important. Do you remember Jesus told 
told disciples, pray in order you, you can enter in temptation. You need to pray before, before the crisis, before keep constantly your communion, intimate communion with God every moment. So parents and grandparents need to learn, to learn this lesson and to teach this lesson to your children and grandchildren. So the occasions of God's silence cause the psalmist to examine themselves and to seek God but with confession and humble petition. Can you realize my first question is, do you need to grasp some practical lessons you need to do when you someday will be suffering? So you need to turn your eyes to God and confess and also con be confident that God is good all the time. He's faithful, lovely Father, even in the middle of my suffering. So think about this. Um, he does, does not re remain silent. He persists. The people, the, the believer, persist in prayer. He examines himself. He declares his love for God. He is sure that God will not remain silent forever. Think in this practical lesson. You need to turn to God in the sanctuary where is Jesus Christ interceding for you? Do you, do you need to put your, your eyes in Jesus dying for you? So think about this. God is good all the time. Well, anyway, we finish our lesson. Uh, remain some other information, but uh, I think the essence, the essence of this lesson uh, is fulfilled. So, are you ready to sing and praise the Lord in a long, strong land? Yes? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> yes, because God is good and faithful and love you so much. Even I, I need to suffer a little bit, a little time. God is very soon will appear here and destroy all evil. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are here because you are lovely, faithful, marvelous, generous, gracious. You are our Father, no one like you, my Lord. So let us to, to learn how to praise your name in the middle of the suffering. And not only we need to learn this lesson, but we need to teach the others how to sing in this strange land. Thank you, my Lord. Keep with us and pour out your Holy Spirit and give us the joy of your presence here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.